the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I am Ben Hall. Good show tonight. An opportunity for you to call in. And we, we, we do want to hear from you. If you are caring for a loved one who is, who is aging, or maybe you yourself are aging, we want to hear your story, because we know this can be a difficult time. We're happy to be talking about elder law and happy to have with us Tim Takis. Uh, Tim, thank you for coming back on. Always glad to be here. We always appreciate the advice you give and, of course, appreciate when people call and share their individual stories. But my first question for you is always, what are you seeing come through the door? This time of year, what are you seeing here recently as far as what people are coming through and asking you? We're seeing, uh, um, actually we're seeing more, uh, more and more people, and I don't know if this is uh, just a coincidence or not, but we're seeing people that are actually coming in and, and asking us more about veterans' benefits. You know, maybe, and I don't know if maybe the word is getting out, maybe some of the in outreach that we've been doing and others are doing, like the VA and whatnot is, is that people are walking in, you know, and they've heard that there's some sort of veterans benefit, that they were a veteran and they're entitled to something, but they're not really sure what. Uh, so people will walk in and let's say they're an older person and they are living at home and they need more help at home and they're wondering how to pay for that. You know, do they wonder, well, I, I served in the, I was in Vietnam or I was in Korea and I understand, will the VA pay for those things? And the answer sometimes is, you know, like, unfortunately, the lawyer's answer typically is, well, it depends. <laughs> because you really have, to, these are benefits that you have to qualify for. Right. You know, so in some cases, if you're a veteran, you know, you, let's say, for instance, you served during, during Korea, you served maybe two years, you know, you were just fine, you got in, you got out, maybe you didn't even go to Korea, but you came home, you had a nice normal life and whatever, and now you're 80 some years old, and you're wondering, well, do I need, am I entitled to some benefits? You know, and if for those people who are in active service, you know, maybe they are, but those are, those are benefits that you have to qualify because of, by reason of your assets and your income. You know, whereas there are other benefits that people get if they were, like, say, maybe served, uh, maybe they're retirees, you know, maybe served 20, 25, or 30 years. There are other vet benefits that veterans can get if they were injured in the service. Those are service-connected disabilities. So it's really, a, it's really a, a wide, you know, a lot of benefits that the VA has, and this, depending upon the criteria that you meet. And this is one of those areas mm -hmm. where people don't know right. they right. have a benefit or an opportunity for something and often it goes unclaimed yes and this is one of those areas where you were like okay you you may be able to really get something here yes yeah because we always tell people that you know those of you who are listening out there if you are a veteran or if you think you are a veteran one is you can always call a veteran service officer vso is what they call them veterans service officer there is typically one in every county in the state and you can actually call any vso you know, in any county, and they will talk to you, and you tell them who you are, and you they and and you will tell them, you know, you you know, you can say, well, look, here's, you know, I've served during whatever, you know, and I want to know if I, you know, if there's, you know, if there's something that I can qualify for, you know, and a lot of, you know, the VSOs know what your, you know, what the criteria is to be deemed a veteran, you know, there are they know that in some cases you may not be a veteran, but you are still eligible to maybe enroll in the VA health system. So there's a lot, a lot of different options that people have, and you know, and oftentimes we tell, you know, and I'm glad to be on today about, you know, talking about the veterans benefits, the VSOs. You can call them, you know, and at least kind of as a starting point. And before I, I move on to the next area I want to cover, let's let's just go to the phones here. Let's okay. go to Mike. Hello, Mike. Mike, are you there? I am here. Hi. What's on your mind? Go right ahead. Uh, yes. Um, I'm interested in making a statement and then asking a question. Uh, yes, I am. I would like to make a statement then ask a short question. First of all, a lot of veterans who did not serve in the military during uh, a time of war, mm -hmm. instead serving in peacetime, uh, they are entitled to some veterans' benefits, and many of them think that they are not. That is correct, and uh, I was, get, I was just getting to that. My question to you is that in light of the fact that the whole issue of veterans' benefits is still evolving and the Congress is still changing 
the parameters of what uh, uh, who is entitled to these benefits. Could you explain just a little bit about how someone who served in peacetime might be uh, eligible for veterans' benefits? Thank Great. You. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, and, thank you. You know, and I'm glad, Mike, I'm glad we had the call in right then because, you know, I, I, I think I was just getting, I was just saying is, is that maybe you served during wartime or maybe you did not. But merely because you did not serve during wartime does not mean that you can't qualify for something or you may not qualify for something. I mean, we tend to think about, okay, it's the Department of Veterans Affairs and hence you need to be a veteran. You know, and the, and the, and the VA, or at least the Congress, has defined a veteran as someone who has served during, during wartime, at least one day during wartime. I mean, you would, but, and, and even that's probably not accurate. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, really what, what being a veteran means is basically you served, in the, you served in the United States Armed Forces. Right. Now, maybe you served during wartime and maybe you didn't. If you served during wartime, maybe you qualify for certain benefits that others that who did not serve during wartime would not qualify for. You know, but regardless of whether you served during wartime or not, you know, almost every veteran that I know of, you know, that if they served at some, you know, in the armed forces of the United States, is is that they can en enroll in the VA health system. You know, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to use VA doctors, they have to use VA hospitals or whatever, but I've had clients that uh, have been enrolled in the VA health system merely to get a, maybe a discount on some, you know, on some medications. You know, I confess to being far from an expert on being the, you know, because they have big books for that. Right, right. But this is, again, one of those areas. It's one of those areas that, you know, that people walk into our office and they say, I'm concerned about whether I, I can qualify for something. You know, and a lot of our job in my office is connect people to the right places where they need to be. And research stuff, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's, what, that's what we have to do. Let's go to Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Hello. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, this is not a this is not a veteran question. Um, I am taking care of an 80 year old neighbor that had all, has Alzheimer's, and um, I have been taking care of her for three years, and I'm just not able to do it anymore. And I hired an attorney five weeks ago and gave her a check, and I have not heard back from her. I have I've tried to call her. I've tried to. Um, text her. I've tried to do everything and she will not return my calls or anything. So I want to know what do I need to do in order to find out whether she served a petition before the court for a conservator. Okay, so Sandra is saying... I hired, I hired her yeah. to go before the court and right. file a petition for conservatorship. Right. And she, I mean, I don't know what what the deal is. How can I find out if she actually filed the petition? Okay. Well, the short answer to that question is is that Sandra can always call the court, you know, in the county where she is residing. So let's say that she resides in Davidson County. Uh, then you would call um, the Davidson County, either call the circuit court clerk, you know, or call the chancery court clerk. Um, to see whether a petition has been filed for a conservator. I mean, that's one thing, and I'm not, you know, Sandra doesn't say whether she's the petitioner. I assume that she is the petitioner. I don't know, you know, she doesn't say, is she asking to be appointed conservator or asking whether somebody else is going to be appointed conservator? But it sounds like she is the, she is the initiating party and the petition would be filed by her asking that a conservator be appointed for this 80-year-old person that she's taking care of. What do you think of her story there? Does that concern you or is it that... It does. I mean, it does that uh, she says, you know, I, 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 I walked into a lawyer's office and I gave her money. Um, she doesn't say how much did she give a filing fee or what it, what it is. Um, and that the fact that she's trying to contact that lawyer, you know, and see my, uh, you know, I, you know, one of the things that lawyers are taught you know, we you know we we believe it or not, we have to we have to we have to get three hours of eth ethics, you know, of education, continuing education. Mi that's the minimum, you know, that we're supposed to get. And one of the things that we know, and the, you can talk to the board of special professional responsibility about it, is is that the primary cause of complaints against lawyers 
is is that they don't re reply to their clients. Right. I you know I can't, you hear that you hear that constantly. You know I try to get a hold of my lawyer and she wouldn't return my call. You know or you know all I'm getting is an answering machine or or whatever it is. I mean, you know, is she calling the office? Is she leaving word with a, you know, with a legal assistant? Is she, it, does she have, is it a person, is like a one person, you know, that is just taking phone calls on an answering machine? I mean, that does concern me. Right. Because it reflects, obviously, on my profession. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, I don't run my office that way. You know, I know you've heard me say many times is that we want people to call us even if we can't help them. You know, we will help them. You know, like Sandra calls us, and we're not necessarily, we don't do conservatorship work, but we'll try to get her in the right place. Right. If she's concerned about that, you know, I can give her some op options as to what she should do if she can't hear from, if she won't hear from the lawyer. Hopefully, it's okay, and, and so you're giving advice right now, just call, and you can call the county um, court and kind of see if if it has been filed. It's unfortunate you would be in a position where you have to do that. Yes, Hopefully the lawyer would let yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but I guess keep calling the lawyer and you can try with the court there. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you, Sandra, for the call. Let's go to Ann. Hello, Ann. Is this Ann? Yes. Go right ahead, Ann. What's on your mind? <clears throat> okay. Um, I have been taking care of a neighbor for the past three years. She's 80 years old and she's got Alzheimer's. And she is um, from another country and she has no relatives in this country. And so I have just taken her under my wing. And five weeks ago, I paid an attorney $1,700 to file a petition uh, uh, in courts to uh, appoint her a conservator or a legal guardian. And I can't get a hold of that lawyer. I mean, she won't answer her phone. Well, the, okay, I think we just had this. I think this is the call we just took, right? Right. So it's now you know how much money it was. So it's the same advice, but right. does that seem, the, does that change anything, the amount of money she paid? No, it sounds like maybe that was a filing fee or something, but I, I'm not really sure. But, right. you know, that's again, another one of those situations, you know, where she should, you know, contact the clerk. You know, she can always call the Board of Professional Responsibility and say, I can't, I, w I don't hear from my lawyer. She can call our office, you know, and we can give her some guidance as to, I don't need to know who the lawyer is because there could be a good reason or who knows what. Mm -hmm. You know, we could try to get her in the right direction. Well, sorry you're going through that, Ann. Uh, thanks again for sharing the story. Why don't we take a break? Yes. Uh, if you want to call in, there's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.